So today is October 25th. It's Sunday night. Uh, it's sort of like our Friday night because we work uh, Tuesday through Sunday and have Mondays off. So <clears throat> it's kind of like a let loose night. And here I am having a cup of tea and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner. Anyway, a week ago last Sunday, I had a housewarming party that was hosted, well, actually is hosted by my myself, but my boss arranged it and everybody came and they brought food and uh, actually we ordered out food and it was really good and stuff and then we started talking about work and got a little heated at some point but actually I think it was good that uh, they were able to be face to face everybody in one room at one time to get things straightened out so um, all in all it was it was good it was a lot of fun uh, the British guys are great uh, they're both been very uh, hospitable and friendly to me and um, they're kind of out for everything, so I, I really appreciate them being around. Um, <clears throat> to Monday. Monday's the day off, and Monday I had access to... No, I didn't. I did not have access to my driver, so I had to uh, wing it and take a cab. I had to go to Ikea, where I got a bunch of stuff like, you know, silverware or cups, mugs for, like, this mug. My big mug for a cup of coffee. It's actually this big, not this big. So, uh, and a couple other things like coffee, coffee make a coffee press. I got since I couldn't find a single coffee maker, an individual one. And uh, I was thinking to myself, wow, I'm gonna go to IKEA in Shanghai. Uh, most of the help don't speak English, as it turns out. Most of the signs are in Swedish. They name, you know, all their items and their furniture and stuff. They have Swedish names, so that actually didn't help me either. Uh, but it was good to actually physically be there. And uh, <clears throat> I really worried about, gee, how am I going to carry all this stuff home? Well, it turns out at Ikea in Shanghai, there's a taxi stand where the cabs are all cargo vans. So you can actually bring home a, a bed and a taxi will, will take you home. They'll just load it up and take you wherever it is you want to go. I thought that was huge because now I can go back and if I wanted to get like a table or something, I wouldn't have to worry about trying to cram it into the back of the trunk of a cab. Um, after that, I actually walked all the way, it turns out to be almost two miles, to uh, Shushi Bao Physical Fitness and Beauty Spa, which is actually a, an exercise gym. Uh, we call them health clubs. but. It's not a healthy place. I mean, the place is not well ventilated, it's hot, and there's no, um, like, wipes for the equipment after someone who uses it. You know, these are all first world problems, I know. But I joined it anyway because it's halfway between my uh, where I live and the Wuxi, uh, Wuxi, the Pushi uh, Fencing Center. And it was, they gave me a six week membership which is perfect because it's going to end like a day or two after i leave uh so um i joined there and it, it was actually not bad um and i saw as i was doing my first workout there one of the fencing coaches walked in that uh, also was a member he says he's there five days a week and <clears throat> uh it's a little unexpected but it was cool i mean I'm, I'm glad i got to see a familiar face even if he didn't speak much english um, so that was pretty much what happened there on, on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, I went to go get my medical test, which you have to do to get a work visa. Um, it was kind of a very hectic because they speak some English, even though I, I think they should speak more because they're dealing almost to totally with foreigners at this medical center place. And, um, I uh, went through everything, got everything done. Uh, they had to take blood, but that was actually rather painless. I had a very good uh, a nurse there taking blood and asking a bunch of questions, did an eye test, tested my blood pressure, and guess what? I found out I have high blood pressure. The doctor is looking at it, his eyebrows go up, and he goes, your, high bread, your blood pressure is a little high. And I'm like, how high? And he's like, let's test it again. So we tested again, and this time his eyebrows went down. He went, your blood pressure is just a little high. You should, you should uh, go to the doctor and, and see. Or he said go to the hospital, but I think he meant the doctor. And um, 
So my boss, I told her about it, and he didn't give me numbers as to how high it was. So she has this portable. Here, I have it here. She has this portable blood pressure monitor or gauge thing that you. It's really cool. Let me get out here. You put it on your wrist, and you put it on your wrist, and you Velcro it down. You press this button. And it starts charging up. I think this is solar powered. And then, uh, you hear that? It's about to take my blood pressure. So the first time I did it, and I think I posted this on Facebook, it was like 197 over 128 or something like that. So I did it again. It was like 180 something. So I guess 120 would be like acceptable range for high. Um, Maybe it's more like actually more like 140, but uh, so we actually went to the doctor as a result of this. Um, but before that, I'll, I'll get back to the doctor in a second. Um, while I was in line doing all the forms and stuff for this blood test, I stood next to a girl uh, who was had red hair, curly hair, and a guy who had this little like goatee thing. Turns out the guy is doing his post doctorate at uh, a job he said it's not really school it's job research in some sort of physics I can't remember which one he said and here this time my blood pressure says it's 209 over 178 and the reason why this is and I'll tell you in a second uh, it's a miss it's a false read but uh, this girl is a was a teacher in English and now she has gotten a job with a company, an mag online magazine called Shanghai Wow. It's sort of like Smart Shanghai or That Shanghai or Time Out Shanghai. Shanghai Wow. What's going on? What new restaurants? What shows? What concerts and things like that. And the guy, turns out, the physicist, is from Champaign, Illinois. That's where he grew up. He went to uni high. And so we started talking, and, and uh, I, I exchanged WeChat with the girl because I wanted to see if they'd be interested in doing a piece on our fencing club. Because I'm sure all the other places may not be, I'm sure they're not doing any features on what to do with your kids. Fencing. <coughs> I still have this cough, by the way, but it's gotten a lot less. Um, after that, on Wednesday, I went and met with a school about starting a fencing program at their school. And it turns out that we used to have, well, Sika used to have a program there, but it kind of fizzled out in this term in the fall. And we're gonna start up again in January. As it turns out, he's totally into it. Uh, he, he, he gave me numbers of where we could, people we could get and places we could do it inside their facility. And uh, I think that he's totally on board and that's gonna be a go. So it's gonna be one of my accomplishments in my first two, two weeks here in, in Shanghai is bringing uh, three schools as my goal and now I have one um, and I have till November 23rd to get two more which I have two more on the back burner um, um, I went to a sports store sort of like a uh, sports authority kind of place I needed to get some uh, shower shoes because I might thought I'm gonna take a shower at the gym I don't think I'll take a shower at the gym, it's really... But um, I got them anyway, and I went and uh, got some other just odds and ends things that it wasn't that much. Oh, by the way, Wednesday in Shanghai was our Back to the Future Day. That was October 21st, 2015, and I think it happened the next day. I kept seeing it on CNN, I was like, no, it was yesterday, but... Not for them, not for you in the U.S. Um, then I came back and I had to interview three interpreters to be my assistant. The first guy, his name uh, was was a nice guy. Uh, he had actually done some homework. He didn't know anything about fencing, but he had actually done some homework and looked it up and watched some YouTube videos and learned that the language for fencing is mostly French and uh, was interested in kind of martial arts and and 
and sports. He's a physical education teacher part-time, so he's looking for something in a new direction. I said, you know, you'd be my translator. He understood most, it turns out, I didn't know this, but I, I say a lot of idioms and slang, and I didn't realize it. So every once in a while, I get a strange look from, from him about, you know, uh, something I said, and I realize, oh, he's, he doesn't understand my street talk. But he, he wasn't bad. Uh, the next person I interviewed was a woman who um, had just gotten out of school, college, and she is lived, uh, came back from, to Shanghai from London. So she speaks English with a bit of a British accent, and the words she uses are very British. So it's kind of weird to hear British English with a British Chinese accent. It's a little complicated, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you ever hear her talk. But she was great. She understood most of my uh, most of my slang and most of my idioms, and um, she says, "Oh yeah, I watch." Modern Family or something like that. I talk like they're on Modern Family. And um, then the third guy, uh, I was going to interview, but my boss said, ah, don't, you know, we're going to hire the girl and you don't even want to talk to this guy because his English isn't good. I said, you know what, I'm just going to go in and say hi anyway. So I go in and say hi. I open the door. He stands up and smiles and I smile and say, hey, how's it going? And he goes, what? I said, how's it going? I thought he didn't hear me or maybe I mumbled. He goes, I don't, uh, I don't understand. I'm like, okay, well, it's nice meeting you. Take it easy. I got to go. I don't know. He came in knowing it was going to be a translator job and he doesn't speak English. Yeah. English, English. He probably knows more textbook English. So that was pretty much my Wednesday. And then we did go out for um, Back to the Future drinks. We were supposed to watch Back to the Future in a bar in a private room, but couldn't get the connection working. But it was fun anyway. Um, oh, we had a coaches meeting, my first coaches meeting with the uh, all the coaches together. And I started to lay down my policies, the things that I wanted them to do, like be on time and work hard all the, way, all the time and be respectful and be receptive to change with my four, top four things. That if nothing else, they walk out of there with those four things. But I had to tell them that it should be policy to put a mask on when doing lesson or drills because they were giving lessons without masks. Yeah, so... Things, little things like that, um, parents are not allowed on the fencing area during fencing. There are some parents who will interrupt the lesson to talk to their kids. And I'm just like, let the coaches coach. And afterwards, your mom, your dad. But in the, while they're on the fencing floor, they're ours. They're in our care, custody, and control. You have to trust us to let them be them. Um, and I had to tell the coaches to enforce that with each other. Make sure everybody's wearing a mask. Make sure all the parents are nicely asked to stand behind the glass wall. And uh, these things are hopefully they will help each other with. But I have a sense that the, not everybody's on board. And I kind of figured that would be the case. Change is not easy. Uh, although that's the fourth thing that they have to do is to be receptive to change. Um, <clears throat> So the coach's meeting uh, was done with the interpreters. Of course, it took twice as long. I asked her opinion. She says, yeah, most of the coaches seem receptive. Only one looked like he was going to fall asleep. But our reputation in China, it turns out, is, is not that good. Uh, we've had some incidents with coaches, international coaches, who have gotten into it with referees, so much so that the Chinese Federation had called... Uh, my boss to complain about his behavior. So we're kind of in the doghouse right from the get-go So I said, you know, we're I asked what is our reputation in China to the coaches and Everybody looked down or away everybody So I, I think I from that I figure it's not good. I said, you know, we got to be the Jackie Robinson's of fencing You know, they don't so I told him Jackie Robinson was the first African-American a player in the uh, Major League Baseball and he knew he had to be twice as good just to be considered equal and I said we have to be the Jackie Robinsons we have to be twice as good just to catch up to getting to be equal
because we are behind the ball right now. So <clears throat> hopefully they understood that. I know that we have a coach who's about, he's this close to signing with us um, from sports school from up north. And uh, he was coach, one of Coach Chen's students. And he's in charge of a sport, he head coach of a sports school where he comes from. And he's thinking about jumping ship and joining us. And he was nodding his head saying, yeah, we got a lot of repair work to do because when he's not coaching, he's refereeing. So he sees and hears a lot of what goes on. And I hope he joins us to help us reform our, our image because we're, we're being damaged by ourselves, as it turns out. Um, the, oh, then my first so-called acting job I got from an actor's WeChat group where they were looking for American speaking, nat natural native uh, speaking American English. Uh, turns out somebody's doing a program for a robot which involves voice recognition, I guess for Americans, because they're going to present this at some show in Las Vegas. <coughs> so uh, I went in and the girl says, gives me a laptop, press the button, sentence will appear, you say it, the microphone's way over there, and just press it and go to the next one. She goes, 200 sentences. And I'm like, well, what? What? I thought, oh, it, it, her English wasn't that great. I think she meant 200 words. Well, it was 200 sentences. 200 sentences. So I do the 200 sentences, and I go it up, walk out, and I say, hey, I, I'm all done. And she goes, oh, no, that was the first set. There's 200 more. I uh, said, oh, OK. So we went back, I went back and did the other 200. Most of them were a lot of the same sentences, but I think they just catch different intonations. And uh, finished that, and I thought, oh, God, this better be the last set. And it was. 300 RMB later, I just walk out of there, and it's done. My first so-called acting job in Shanghai. wasn't really acting, but I got it from actors, so I counted it as acting. Um, I did grocery shopping. I made my poor translator girl who just started take me grocery shopping. <laughs> she was funny. Um, I can't read some of the labels when you go to local stores. I don't know what it is. Uh, but it turns out she brought me to this city store, city market or something. And a lot of it was international stuff. I was yet able to get like Frosted Flakes and some coffee and some uh, uh, bread and, you know, eggs, um, juice. Uh, the... Um, American juice is literally four times more than the Taiwanese juice. So I got the Taiwanese juice and it tastes great. So I'm pretty happy with what I got. My big uh, frustration here in Shanghai has to deal with my bank. I have been going to every bank that I can get to and trying to put my eight card in for ATM and it won't be accepted. Well, finally today, which is Sunday, two weeks and a day after I got here, I found out that the bank has deactivated my card because it doesn't have a chip. I was on the phone for one hour, long distance. It's probably going to be a $250 phone call um, transferred to four people to find out that they had deactivated my card because it didn't have a chip. And I'm like telling them, you know, I'm holding the card in my hand right now and it has a chip. I went into the bank personally three times to verify that this card would work in China and Japan and Hong Kong and anywhere else that I might travel to around in Asia. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. go to any ATM. The bank in Asia may charge me, but Chase will not charge me for any fees. I'm like, that's fine, whatever. Um, three times they told me it would be fine. So I finally get here, and of course it's not fine. Not only is it not fine that they don't accept it, but they deactivated the Chase on its own with no notification to me. Finally, I found out that they had sent me a new card, which is why they deactivated this one with a different card number on it. The same, I got the chip with the same card number on it. For some reason, that's no good. I said, why? There's a chip. Anyway, so my card has to be activated daily. I have to call them long distance, 
every day to get it activated so I can use it. So what I'm going to do is I activated it today, which is, well, it was Saturday night and where I did it. And they said, well, I'm she's going to keep it active until Monday morning. So I can get a boatload of cash now and hopefully it'll take care of me through for the rest of the trip. I'm just really unbelievably angry with them. And I screamed at just about every person who picked up the phone on the other end. So at least I think it's solved now. Uh, on Saturday, I had a parent meeting and it was heartbreaking because this girl was painfully shy and she would just wanted to quit fencing. And it turned out she joined because a friend of hers had joined. Her parents were overjoyed because she doesn't want to do any sports. But when they came, she came to them and said, I would like to do fencing, they were like, yes. So they signed her up and her friend and then something changed and the class schedule was now a conflict for her to be with her friend. So now she wants to quit. So I, you know, she was an artist. She loves drawing and painting. I said, you know, fencing can help help with your uh, being creative. But um, she wasn't buying it and she just wanted to quit. And I didn't want to have her unhappy in fencing. She's going to hate it. People are going to hate her because she's so miserable in it. So I said, you know what, I'll tell you what. Try it for a while and if you totally hate it after a month, then, then that's it. She didn't want to do that. So I said, okay, then if you ever want to come back, I want you to come back. Just come back and visit. Come back and show me some of your art. You know, I'd love to see your paintings and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't think she'll come back, but uh, who knows? She might. <laughs> Um, today is Sunday. I was in the Pushi Center and um, one of the uh, students from uh, Bucky, Leach's students from New York, moved from New York to Shanghai. And she, she and her mom and her, and her father came to, to visit and meet me and to see the uh, fencing gym and uh, I think she might join. I, I think she's a nice kid and the mom is very interested in, uh, in keeping her in fencing and I think she actually just might sign up. Um, I hope she does. I think she's a great kid and there's another girl in our club who's also the same age, 12 years old, and they would be just best friends right from the get-go. I, I can just tell the kind of, they would just mesh really easily right away. Um, then I finally did my first college consulting uh, session with a girl, the first girl from this club who is about to graduate high school this fall. I advised her on how to put together her resume, how to, what things to put on there, what things to leave off, and the things that she left off, I think she should talk about instead of have it on there. Um, showing her best light, giving her a good picture, I said this resume is your ticket in the door. After that, when you meet them, that's when everything will, they'll make more, uh, better decision about you because they'll see how charming you are, how smart you are, how potentially tra talented you are. And I think she's very good, but I don't think she thinks she's very good. So she naturally underperforms. But um, overall, it's been a crazy busy week. Meetings take no mi minimum two hours. Most of the time, they're three, three and a half. My coach's meeting was one hour. Oh, I forgot one thing. Hold on one second. We had a team building uh, project, and I put together this ukulele. I had to learn to play it, obviously, but this is what we did, uh, all the coaches did on uh, Friday. Pretty cool. I sanded it, I glued all these pieces together, I varnished it, I strung it, and I had help tuning it, but I could have tuned it myself. But they wanted to tune it for me. Everybody seemed to want to help me like I was some sort of invalid, but I don't know. And one of the other coaches kept his kept falling apart. I mean they would break at the neck and he kept dropping it. I don't know. Maybe he should stick to fencing. But getting back to the last thing, this heart monitor. Turns out when you do this, you have to have your arm the same height as your heart. I didn't. That's why my heart rate, my blood pressure shot up so much. 
I did it again, and it was like 70 points lower just because of where your arm is when you're taking the test. So if you ever get one or you ever go to the doctor's office and they're, having, they're measuring down here when your heart is up here, make sure your arm's at least on a table or they do it high up on your arm. Just something for you to know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I will keep you posted on what goes on on this next coming up crazy week because I'm going to go to my first tournament in Shenzhen in, uh, on the weekend. So I might be a little late posting this, but uh, I'm looking forward to my first Chinese tournament to see their kind of crazy as opposed to our kind of crazy. Take it easy and have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.